Hello beauties and beasts and welcome to the weekend best of edition of the Tube. What's that? Oh, that's where we take a deeper look at the stories that made our week. Let's do it. With me to do the weekly look are media watchdog Mr. Roth, Daniel Roth and Mr. Does Lot of Stuff, Mr. Ringel, Shy Ringel. <laughs> How was your week, boys? It was really good. Really good? Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and say three quarters good. Three quarters good, <laughs> half good, let's start. Okay, can peace between Israel and Palestinians be the next big startup? Probably not, but Israeli startups with Palestinian interns might be a step in the right direction. Earlier this week, we reported about Yadin Kaufman, a venture capital veteran active in the Israeli tech field since 1987, who has been working for months to launch a nonprofit called the Palestinian Internship Program. In two weeks, we we shall broadcast a special program of the Tube that deals with this subject exactly. Let's take a quick look. What is unique about Sofin that Sofin is trying to achieve a structural change in the Arab society and not only a cosmetic change. We are in the Arab society. We have to take مستوى الحكومي، مستوى سلطاتنا المحلية، مستوى الشركات الهايتك الإسرائيلية، والأهم من ذلك رأس مال البشري للأكاديميين والأكاديميات العربية. The Israeli high-tech industry is in bad need for highly qualified engineers. Instead of looking for those engineers offshore and other places in the world, we have them here. We just need to know how to integrate them. Sofin played a significant role in bringing these students up to speed on uh, subject matters that relate to high tech, and with that made them uh, employable. Uh, we hired actually the largest number of uh, Sofin graduates over the past uh, three yep, years. Yep, this video is from uh, Sofin, an organization that's meant to implement Arabs in the tech world in Israel. Roth, Daniel Roth, do you think high tech uh, can bridge between uh, Israelis and Palestinians? I think it's one of the ingredients, definitely. I think uh, if we're talking about real shared society, mm -hmm. uh, real partnership, then economic partnerships, projects in high tech, projects that are bringing people together to build new businesses and new ideas is a, is a clear and present uh, important ingredient. At the same time, without political and uh, legal equality, you're talking about something that's too, too little. And, uh, and it won't have the desired effect of creating a real shared society if there's not also the other side. Well, I don't know. Shared society sounds like an utopic dream to me, I think. Why would Israelis and Palestinians trust each other uh, in the tech field if they can trust each other in so many other? Let's, tell, let's say the word. It's money. Money makes the world go round. And if there'll be money opportunities, people will go there. So if we're talking about shared society, what our people are hoping for is that if there's money, mm -hmm. we can all put aside our disagreements and all agree that we like money. But now, money was there to begin with and it didn't happen Yeah, yet. but, but high-tech is now the one of the only developing, developing uh, fields mm -hmm. in, in economy, in every economy, especially if we're talking about the Israeli economy, which is still trying to make itself the startup nation. Mm -hmm. And where we're talking on the startup nation and all the innovations, with uh, uh, a lot of people think that this is the opportunity to make Arabs uh, into our society, and we will make money, they will make money, and peace will break out. Now, it's a very, there, there are some childish thoughts to it. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's like, it's too much on the money and not, as Daniel says, about the politics. There is still a big difference and there is a big political gap between Arabs and Israelis uh, and uh, we need to uh, uh, think about that also, not well, just... Lots of, uh, lots of Israelis have made big money from technology. Can we see a future where also the Arab society can make this big money or there will always be you know, one step ahead uh, before because uh, the Israelis will not let them get to the big 
Um, I know it's, it's a big money. It's it's a question of of the intersections of of race and class uh, and also gender and a number of issues coming together. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, it's it's true that there's uh, there is sort of a, a race hierarchy that exists in this country as well as in the United States and other countries mm -hmm. uh, that that exists in correlation to class hierarchy. Mm -hmm. uh, and so in order to bridge those kinds of gaps that exist along race class lines, mm -hmm. you need to address not just the money, but also the race issues also and again that that takes place in the halls of power in legal sense it also takes place in uh, education and on the grassroots level and it takes place in high high tech offices um, uh, where people get to know each other uh, again it's just one part of the solution but it is part of the solution oh we think it's a lovely part we'll show you the interview we did with Sofen chairman uh, next week I think yes next week okay let's move on this week was after Apple's big week with the new iPhones and the Apple Watch and Apple Pay and Apple everything. Everybody talked on and on about the tech, the innovation, the free U2 album, who listens to U2 anymore, and the big money, but we want to talk about media hype, tech lifestyle, and techno fetish. Let's take a look at Apple trying to sell you a lifestyle. Dun, dun, dun. Um, Shai, what makes Apple's products so irresistible to their fans? It's an addiction. Explain it. Um, because Apple know how to market itself and because they make the products a little bit f on the fetish side let's th there's a really big design idea behind uh, what Apple makes and what they make good and they know how to make you fetishize their own products and they know how to make you uh, desire them not just Need, need them on you know practical level there is a lot of unpractical thing on apple's products when you think about it you and know each time you want to buy a computer you it's, encounter it, again yeah. the price you're going to pay only for the brand it's and not look. only it's not only the cost there are a lot more uh, applications on pc than on mac and there are a lot more things you have to adjust when going into mac and it's it's much less practical, but as Steve Jobs once said, when you buy a Mac, you love it, and when you buy a PC, you use it, and and this is what yeah 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 and, that's and, a good quote, Mister Jobs. And, and this Jobs. this is exactly what Johnny Ivy, the designer, the head designer in Apple, is trying to do. He's trying to make us understand that. Uh, when we talk about a, a tech company and lifestyle company, for Johnny Ivy, it's the same. They are both the same. Uh, making products, making people use those products, is a it's a lifestyle. Yeah, well, company. for me, it's not quite the same yet. Do you feel that they're becoming more of a lifestyle company than a tech company? I don't know if more or less. I think, though, that it's what we're talking about here is really the right question to be asking now, because mm -hmm. there wasn't really anything new on the table this week. Mm -hmm. The iPhone 6, the iWatch, these were kind of, these are things we've seen in other iterations in other places. So actually, this is the more relevant conversation is the design question. What does it look like? How does it integrate into our lives? And, uh, and so I, I think that that's the unique thing about Apple, not necessarily that they win every time, but that they're the ones thinking about how does it seamlessly integrate into our lives. Okay, so why does the media, even us, okay, why do we behave like Apple's little puppy every time again and again? 
Well, again, I, I, I think that there is something to talk about with Apple when they release a new product. The problem is that people talk about these products as if they're revolutionizing the industry every time they come out, mm -hmm. and they're really not. There's small innovations, big innovations, and sometimes a revolution. The, the creation of the iPhone uh, uh, in, invented entire new markets. Uh, the creation of the iPhone 6 was a tweak on something that already existed. Uh, so why do we keep coming back? Because we're hoping every time that it's a revolution. Most times it's an innovation, but we really, really hope, and we, we play that out for a week or so after mm -hmm. each announcement. Well, Shai, I'm assuming you have lots of friends that are practically fans of Apple, intelligent people, yeah. adults. Yeah. How do you explain the fanaticism? It's really complicated. You can't really explain it in a, in a sentence. There you have is, half a minute. Yeah, there, <laughs> there is like um, the underdog feeling, and there is um, the idea of, as Daniel said, that uh, it really integrates into your life and it makes you love it and not just wanting it. And there is there are a lot of things, and Apple market themselves really, really good. But there is this. A big idea from the beginning that Steve Jobs like he said that he really wanted us to enjoy technology and to uh, be happy with our uh, tech gadgets and you know people are still looking for uh, happiness and God and love okay so as long as the human race will be unhappy yeah Apple will have money. Okay, yeah. let's move on. Harnessing the power of viral videos, contagious memes, and social media for greater good is, well, very trendy these days. So, First Lady of the United States has jumped the bandwagon and joined Upworthy.com, that's the mecca of feel-good viral videos, to promote higher education for first-generation college students. A, uh, well, worthy cause. Let's watch the first video curated by Mrs. Obama before we go further. There probably isn't any stereotypes in this day and age as far as me being a black guy going to college, but as far as being education, I think I'm breaking a lot of stereotypes. I mean, just look at my physical appearance, you might think he might be going into, you know, sports or something like that. I'm just a regular guy. And when I come in here, they treat me like, like a movie star and it's, it's awesome. I love it. When my brothers and sisters moved here, they were newcomers, they knew no English. So when I have my ESL students and they tell me I've been here for a week, I've been here for a day, it's like seeing my brothers and sisters walk into the classroom. And so ESL to me touches my heart because I know exactly where they're coming from. I know the struggles. That's the beauty of this country, that it doesn't matter where you come from, what you look like, how you talk, how you dress, if you want to become something and you want to be something, you can. Okay, Shai, what's going on here? I mean, why did you join Upworthy? What's your next step? Or BuzzFeed? What's going on? Uh, yeah, Upworthy, it's a really strange uh, pick for uh, Mrs. Obama. Uh, some thinks she's really bored, and some thinks she has too many causes. And let's uh, face the facts here. Uh, she was supposed to be a uh, uh, career for one week and this post got like 40,000 views this is a failure for Mrs. Obama it's upworthy you know cats who look stupid make much more views a lot more views than uh, what she got and she's probably backed out from the entire deal I, th um, I think that maybe her a-list power as a celebrity doing things like that has, is not as powerful anymore. It could be. I'm, look, the, the, the partner of the president has a platform to do all kinds of good, send all kinds of good messages, and mm -hmm. that's really nice. That's really important. Uh, I think that she probably thought that Upworthy might be, might be a, a way to, to magnify that voice, mm -hmm. and it wasn't. There is a disconnect between the office of the First Lady and uh, you know the nature of viral video it seems and i think i think that that needs to be fixed the cultures 
of those two spaces, the kinds mm -hmm. of messages they're trying to put out there, mm -hmm. in order to to create some kind of seamless partnership. As it stands now, it's clear that this was a failure. Uh, there's probably a lot of reasons for it. Yeah, well, we'll have uh, Mrs. Obama here on the tube next week. We can talk to her about this failure <laughs> and give her some advice on how to make a good viral video. Let's move on. Before we send you off to party the weekend away, here's our favorite viral video of the week. It's dirty, it's dancing, it's music Let's Get down on it. Okay, goodbye. Thank you very much. I thank you very much, Daniel. We'll be back on Monday. Log on to our Twitter and our Tumblr. It's the Tube 24. And always remember, those who escape hell never talk about it. And nothing much bothers them. Bothers them after that. Oof, goodbye. <laughs>